Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another video. This is a paid request. This time for Walter. Thank you so much for that. For those interested in requesting any type of videos, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And this is for Vice Squad, a 1982 film directed by Derry Sherman, who did Dead and Buried. And he also did Poltergeist 3. The long drain for that one. Now, the film stars Susan Hubley, which you may recognize her. She was an estate from New York. She was that girl in that place called Chock Full of Nuts. Stay placed in, like, she tries to help them, vice versa, but then she just pulled in by those people in the sewers. And Stay tries to help her, kind of, but can't really. She stars in this as a hooker with a heart of gold. And it definitely captures that city life of the late 70s, early 80s, where a lot of these cities were very, very grimy and sleazy and garbage on the streets and hookers everywhere. And I mean, they this was made in 82, so it, this is the right time to capture that look and that feel. Because for the most part, a lot of cities are cleaned up quite a bit compared to how they were back then. But yeah, Caesar Hubley is a hooker with a hard gold. She's forced into doing this prostitution thing to get money for her daughter. Fairly early on, early on, like I said, she sends her daughter to her grandparents. While this is happening, one of her friends, Ginger, contacts her and she steered. Her pimp beat the hell out of her. Hey, it's going to be okay. Just stay away from him. Uh, Gary Swanson, he plays the police officer that's a part of all this. Which he's okay. He reminded me a bit of if you take Michael Moriarty from The Stuff and To the Winged Serpent. And you mix him a bit with Steve McQueen. And like Gary Swanson like, is okay. I kind of wish they got something, someone with a bit more life personality to him whether it be like an Isaac Hayes Fred Williams, Williamson type or hell Michael Moriarty or like someone else I think I say that because he's definitely outshone by the villain played by Wingshauser which at the very least if nothing else definitely see this for Wingshauser he steals the show as his vicious murderous pimp called Ramrod which I mean that name kind of tells it all who again is so vicious and insane and is willing to kill anybody who gets in his way like when he goes to see Ginger and she's in this motel and he's like oh all I want to do is give you the love you want and the love you need Please, darling, please open the door. She foolishly does, and then he busts in and goes, I cannot believe you are that stupid. Ties her up, gets this, what they call a pimp cane, which I think is wire hanger, kind of, well, you know, bunched up. Beats her with it. She's found in the, you know, we later see her in the hospital. Cops try to talk to her, but she dies of her injuries. So then they talk to Season Hoobly. They get her in a trumped up charge of drugs. And it's like, yeah, I know you didn't do these, but the judge doesn't know that. And then also shows her what happened to her friend. <clears throat> and to be honest, this whole scene, it made the cop unlikable to me. I mean, I really didn't like this guy. The, the, the police officer, because... Okay, I did it. Hooking is bad, but you know she's got a kid. You want to put a fake charge on her to make her go to prison. <clears throat> then you show her your dead friend, pushing her face into the dead friend's face, going look at her. You didn't even tell her that her friend was dead, so she's finding out her friend is dead. You're shoving her face into the woman's corpse. Pulling her hair, holding her hair there. 
And then you think, okay, maybe he's like, hey, I'm sorry, I was too rough. No, he just goes back and shoves her head into it again. I'm like, this cop's a prick. He's a pretty unlikable prick. I don't really care to root for this guy. It's one thing, it's like she she was told her friend died and then she rebuffed it for whatever reason and I said, oh, really? Well, I'm not going to be nice anymore and then did that, like maybe although then you're thinking, well, why would she rebuff the, the death of her friend? That's true, too. But I say just, I don't know, it made me not like the character. But what I did like was like Susan, Susan Hubley did fine. She's forced to work with the cops to go to Wingshauser, seduce him, go back to their place. He's like, you can work for me. She's wired. The cops go in. Wingshauser freaks out. And that's what I'm talking about. Wingshauser is the MVP of this movie. I mean, when he finds out she screwed him over... He gets out of the, the cops and grabs her and threatens her and like takes like a stool and like keeps in her head with it and then throws the stool at the tops. When he finds out that the person was dead, he's like, what's well, so I just beat her I just roughed her up a bit. Then when he finds out she's dead, he's like surprised. But you tell he doesn't feel bad about it. He's always trying to talk sweet to people until he gets what he needs and then screws them over. When he gets arrested and he's able to get away from the cops by kicking one in the face and then another one like lays wrapped around his neck, it's steep, gets to a guy that's going to hacksaw his cuffs, starts talking mad crap to him, and then the guy gets the hacksaw right to Wingshauser's neck and goes, Don't give me that trapper shit. Okay, okay, man, okay. <laughs> Tosses guy named Eddie, who's got like this like bondage outfit and this big lot of tattoos on his face. Gets a gun, I said automatic. Hey, it's okay, man. All you have to do is ask just for anything for a friend. Now you don't call someone? Yeah, sure, I'll call. I, I like the guy who plays the, the guy Eddie. He's like, sure, I'll call. Anything for a friend. It gives like little kiss and stuff. I think that's what makes the film work. Is that there's a lot of personality. In the environment. To show the sleazy side. Of this almost other world. That's on the, the streets. Of these cities. Where the police station. That has like too many hookers in there. Which I like the line one of them says. When our hoes were prostitutes, there's a difference. Yeah, hoes give it away for free. <laughs> or when some of the cops are trying to talk to people in the club because they disappointed now they gotta either find the pimp or they gotta find Susan Hubley. Find one or the other, and they're looking around. And they talk to some people, and this black lady who's a cop. Tries to talk to this guy, and this guy is talking mad crap. And she pulls a gun on him and goes, Blink your eyes and you die in the dark. <clears throat> I thought it was a good line. I, I've never heard that line before. Like, don't move. You blink your eyes, you'll be dying in the dark. I actually like that line. I think that's a pretty good line. I know I've seen that actress before. I don't know where... Who plays the top. But I know I've seen her before. I actually would have been fine if she was the lead. And st I mean, like I said, Derry Swanson was fine. But I would have been fine if that lady was the lead. I, I liked her attitude a bit more. <laughs> to be honest. Oh, this did get a Stream Factory Collector's Edition. So for those who are interested, it does have a Blu-ray. 
Uh, let me double check what's on this out of curiosity. Audio commentary with director Derry Sherman and producer Brian Frankish. Interview with actor Derry Swanson. Interview with director Derry Sherman. Interview with producer Brian Frankish. Actress Beverly Todd. Todd. Actor Pepe Serna. Interview with actor Michael Ensign. A look at the locations. Trailer, TV spots. So I guess Wayne's Hauser didn't want to talk about this film. Well, I mean, that's kind of a, yeah. That's kind of a shame if that's the case. But actually, I was going to try to see if I could find the, the name of that lady who was the cop. One second. I don't know if I can. Beverly Todd? I think that's her, Beverly Todd, who was actually interviewed. Yeah, I liked her. Oh, she was in moving Richard Pryor. Okay. She was in moving Richard Pryor. Did she play the the wife? Yeah, she played Richard Pryor's wife in moving, which I enjoy that film. She was in The Bucket List with Jack Nicholson. She was on Lean On Me. The Morgan Freeman film. I probably remember her from that too. But yeah, moving, that's right. No wonder she seemed familiar. Beverly Todd. Like I said, part of me is like, I kind of wish she was the... <laughs> like I said, I liked her. I liked her attitude. I say I like the this weird world that it showcases. Because like there are times where as the cops are trying to look for one or the other, you either have Winshauser on his turmoil where he's just making everyone's life hell. He's he's finding Season Hubley's friends, dragging them into the car and slamming their head, and then when he gets involved, just throws her into the trash. She's not dead, but, you know, pretty beaten up. Or finds this overweight sugar pimp and talks about how, you know how you can't eat women? Because you ain't got no balls, boy. Castrates him. The guy's alive. Maybe he doesn't want to later on, but he is found alive. Just castrated. And just going crazy. Just, again, Wayne's Hauser knows how to sell crazy fairly well. Or Susan Hubley doing her jobs, like this weird job where the chauffeur says, hey, I have a job for my client who I drive for. I recognize the chauffeur. He's the same guy who was in the original Ghostbusters. He owned, he was owned the hotel and says, that's too much, I won't pay it. Oh, that's fine. We'll, we'll bring it back. No, no, no. Don't do that. Don't do that. In the scene after they capture Slimer, that's the guy haggling over the bill with the Ghostbusters. It's that guy who's the chauffeur. And then this weird scene where, spoilers, she's in a wedding dress, goes down, looks like a funeral. The guy pops up. She freaks out and curses him. He's like, you ruined it. You talked. You weren't supposed to talk. And then, of course... She freaks out in all this, leaves, which I don't blame her for. I mean, this is hell of a weird fetish. What, a funeral tink? Like, I don't even know what kind of tink you would call that. So it definitely... It, it, world building. It does a decent job of world building, of just how kind of insane these streets have become. I know in the trailer there's a guy in a Superman outfit. I, I don't know if it was in the opening. Because there's an opening montage showing stuff. Maybe it was in that and I missed it. But I know if you watch the trailer there's like a guy. Like a Superman outfit or something. Like hitchhiking. I didn't see him in the film but it might have been. I might have missed it. I might have missed that part. Now, granted, I mean, there's not a lot of 
character development, if you looked into that, it's very much in its exportation roots. One thing leads to another, Wingshauser gets seasoned Hubley, the cops are chasing after him, they get to him, right as he's about to beat the lady, they go in, there's a firefight, Wingshauser jumps out the damn window, and the cop, Gary Swanson, is chasing after him. Things did take the care of the end, so I won't spoil every single thing. But yeah, I, I like the atmosphere that is showcased the world, the just the weird cast of characters throughout. Just their looks and their demeanor and their dialogue. They give these little moments, and it's popular with so many of these little moments that make it an interesting watch. The director did a nice job showcasing the slimy, grimy bits of these streets. Wingshauser, crazed, manic, insane uh, MVP of the movie. It's worth a watch just for him. Season Hubley does fine. Like, she's alright. Like, she does fine. Gary Swanson, I don't... He doesn't do a bad job. I think just because... That initial bit with the... Season Hubley made me go, Okay, I'm not sure if I really like this character... And then, like I said, if you had, like, a Robert Forster... Like, if you change the writing of that scene a bit... I, I don't remember... I don't know 100% how, but if you change... And you, again, someone like Robert Forster... I think Robert Forster would have been great in this role. Now I'm thinking... Man, I wish it was Robert Forster in this lead role as the top. And he, he doesn't have to play exactly like this. Just more of, like, come on, like, you know... This lady died. You're not going to help us. Like write him with a little bit more humanity. I think Robert Forster has that. That cool. Calm. Sometimes affable. Behavior. He would have been a good. Counterpoint to Wingshauser. It's just that while Gary Swanson's fine. Just Wingshauser like overpowers him acting wise. I think mean, Robert Forster or someone like that, I think, would have been much more impressive. Plus, I mean, it would have been great to see Robert Forster and Wingshauser go at it. That'd be pretty cool. That would have been pretty cool. But, I mean, I do like the film. Like I said, it does have a nice pace to it. We just see the weird subculture of just how the nightlife of these cities were back in the day. I didn't mind some of the supporting actors, some of the other fellow cops. You have the one cop who's trying to be undercover, trying to have this fake Jamaican accent and not really selling it 100%. The music, interesting to have Wingshauser do the song at the beginning and the end. Definitely gives a, a different vibe to the proceedings. Spoiler for the ending, pretty much the cop chases Wingshauser, has Wingshauser pinned, draws his gun, Wings tries to shoot. Now it's one of those older films that when the gun shot, it, it's like a paintball that hits it. Of course, we all know what a gun shot more likely would do to someone. It wouldn't just look like a paintball. That's what it is with some of these movies, you either let it go or you don't. And uh, there are movies that I like that have done that too, where the gunshot just, like someone hits hit you with a paintball on the head. Again, it's, you know, it's not going to be maniac or anything, you know, the head explode. Oh, although with how old? Uh, bit of exploitation this could be. I think they could have gone a bit in that direction. Maybe they thought that'd be a bit too much. Or at least like a little bullet hole. At least have like a little bullet hole. I think that would have worked better. Like to like have just... Probably like there's a little bullet hole. Not just, you know, paint. 
So I didn't really like that little bit, but... And I thought for that type of guy, he should have, like, unloaded the whole clip. He'd be like, pa 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 pa. Yeah, I think... He deserved a little bit more. I thought he died a bit too quickly. For just how crazy he's been throughout most of the film. But these are, like, little nitpicks. Overall, I did like the film. Like I said, I, I liked the world it showcased. Uh, Wayne's Hauser was great. I like the slimy, grimy, uh, just weird scenes like the some of the job season Hubley does, and like I said, you don't really get a whole lot of depth. It's it's not like you think she's gonna change her ways after at the end. She even asks the cop, you know, you're not going to change the streets. Why do you do this? And he has no answer, so he just walks away. <laughs> But, uh, at the end of the day, still a film I did like overall. So with that said, thanks for watching. Take care, and we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.